That's an interesting question. And it's a question I can answer now here at T4 Teachers, a time that me and you can sit down and discuss a little bit about teaching English to very young children. I haven't got a cup of tea. Uh, I've just finished mine. I hope you've got a cup of tea. And <laughs> let's dive into it. So hi, my name is Steve Watts. I've been teaching uh, English to children for uh, over 15 years. And in this series, T4 Teachers, um, I try to answer some of your questions and give you a few hints and tips uh, from my experience of how we can make lessons fun, enjoyable and of course uh, informative and educational. Uh, uh, we have a question here from Danny Alacon. Aracon. Close. God, I'm really terrible with names, aren't I? I think everybody in the world should just wear a name badge 24 hours a day. That would definitely help me out. Um, okay, you have put a comment which is in relation to um, one of the uh, games that we upload onto Facebook. Uh, we record uh, my colleague, Michelle, um, who has been teaching, uh, using all of our materials and our books for um, about four years in our kindergarten. And what we do is we try to take some of the games and activities, post them up uh, onto Facebook, just to give you an idea on how to uh, play a couple of games. Some of them are classics um, that uh, we've done for many, many years and perhaps you've forgotten about, maybe you already know about it. Some of them are a little variation on a theme and I hope there's maybe one or two that are new for you. And I think as good teachers, we're always looking for some new ideas and new activities. Anyway, Danny, what, uh, what has been put uh, at the bottom here was that, uh, how can I work with this kind of activity? when I have over 45 students, and it's just me. Um, in our kindergarten, uh, we are extremely lucky that we're able to limit the numbers uh, of children that we teach during the input sessions. So when we're focusing on inputting English, we split the class up and we have typically around sort of like eight children um, to make it far more manageable so that we can spend a little bit of time on each individual student. It's Great uh, if you can do it, and I know that in many schools, many situations, that is just not possible. So, what can you do? I think the key to this is teamwork. Um, what I would suggest is that uh, at the beginning of uh, every week, you divide the class into teams. Um, it can be about four or six teams. And throughout the week, take one volunteer from each, um, each team to come and play the activity. And of course, because uh, the team has been working together for you know, five days, um, they're going to sort of really want to make sure that their teammate wins to, to cheer them on. And hopefully they will be watching and looking and listening. They might not actually be doing the activity, but because they are watching and they're involved and they're engaged and they have a, a reason to want their teammate to win, then they are still learning. So that's the way that we can play some of these far more active games in larger classes. Now, I would also recommend that you do not stick to these uh, divisions. Uh, what can very quickly happen is there can be quite a deep rivalry that instantly uh, occurs. And of course, if that happens, then uh, the children are going to, uh, th th you start to see the children competing a bit too competitively against each other. We, we want it to be fun and interesting and entertaining. Of course, we want some of that competition, but not so much that the rivalry becomes really quite uh, bitter and they're doing anything possible to win. Um, so I think that's a way that we can play these games where there's a lot of running, there's lots of movement uh, without getting 45 or you know 50 or 60 in China, perhaps even up to 70 children uh, moving around the classroom. Another quick hint and tip is that you don't always have to physically move. Of course, um, one really popular game is stations. Uh, we put different stations around the classroom, different cards, and we ask the children to run to that station. Of course, in a large class, uh, you could maybe just take uh, one or two people from the teams to actually do the running. The rest of the class have to point. Um, and of course, when the whole group is pointing to the correct flashcard, then you can award a point because they were first uh, to run there, so to speak. Um, I hope that helps. If you've got some more hints and tips on how to work with uh, larger classes, please do put it in the comment section below. And if you're interested in um, this particular area, you know, check out what other people are saying. I know that I will. I'm always looking for new ways and new ideas and activities. 
If you care, please share, okay? Um, it really helps if you share this video uh, with other teachers that you know. It helps us just spread, and uh, of course, all of that is very beneficial for us. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Hello, if you care, please like and share. Thank you. Hello to Maria Trebel. Hi, the reason I'm saying hello to you is because I'm about to answer your question that you put on our Facebook wall with the hashtag AskSteve, hashtag t for teachers At least I hope you did. Martin finds them and he tells me what to, uh, what to answer. But anyway, apart from that, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's great to see you. Uh, this is t for teachers My name is Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids for over 15 years, um, teaching English as a foreign or a second language. It's the time that we can share a cup of tea. Hmm. Relax a little bit, get the children out, find a quiet space, and we'll talk about uh, teaching kids. So let's jump into it. So Maria, uh, you said good morning. Uh, it still is morning, so yes, good morning to you. Uh, could you transcribe the song uh, that is sung at the beginning of the game, please? Okay, I think we need a little backstory here. Uh, we posted up a, a video of Michelle um, teaching using our books and materials, and uh, she is demonstrating one activity um, as part of the in the door routine. Um, in the door routine is really, really important. It sets the tone. It uh, means that um, one activity has finished. We're about to start with English. And of course, it gives them a little time just to switch. If they need to switch from one language to another, it gives them time to do that. And of course, being part of the routine, they're now prepared for your lesson. But hey, what do you do if you are the only teacher, you're in the classroom, and of course the children are not moving to a different classroom, you can't do an in-the-door routine because they're already sitting down at their desks. You can and you should, uh, in my opinion. If you disagree with me, put in uh, something in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. Um, but I think you can still do it. Um, you can finish, um, maybe say a maths lesson, get them to close the books and say, okay, can you all please move over to the side of the classroom, maybe by the door, or it could be um, at the front or at the back, wherever you have a little bit of space, just to line them up and start with um, an activity, an in-the-door routine. Uh, Michelle uses the song uh, and she sings, stand in line, please stand in line, it's time to say hello. Stand in line, please stand in line, hello, hello, hello. And then she goes on to play touch something red uh, with individual children to get them in the door. Um, we do have a lot of other um, classroom management songs and uh, in the door routine songs and we post those up on our YouTube channel which is What's English. It's different from Wow English TV. Wow English TV has uh, me and Maggie. Hello! <laughs> there she is. Um, and yeah, I know we're looking for her everywhere aren't we? Um, but that's me and Maggie uh, doing something fun for the kids uh, to help you introduce and practice the language. Um, on the YouTube uh, channel What's English, that's where we post uh, a lot of different things. Uh, there's my video blog that's up there, um, but there's also lots of uh, different sample lessons, uh, and there are these classroom management songs. So if you search YouTube for What's English Classroom Management, you should find some of them there. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Please do leave your comments, your criticisms, um, anything you like in the comments section below. Not anything, obviously, within reason. Let's, you know, keep it nice. Um, but uh, uh, if you have your question, hashtag ask Steve, hashtag tea for teachers. Thank you kindly for watching. Enjoy the rest of your tea. Yay. Hello, if you care, please like and share. Thank you. Hello, hi, it's time for Tea for Teachers. I don't have a cup of tea. It seems to always happen when I record these, but hi, it's the time that we can spend together, just without the kids, uh, talk a little bit about teaching English to children. Hi, my name's Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids for over 15 years, and let's jump in to some questions that uh, we've had uh, via our Facebook page, at What's English, should be written there now. Uh, so we have a question from Raul Gupta. Hello to you. Hi. Uh, I hope you're uh, well. Oh, you've got a two-year-old daughter and uh, you say that she uh, enjoys our content and you would like to know if I can suggest a couple of apps. Um, yes, there is so many, so there are so many apps out there. It's difficult to really find a good one and to know uh, what would be uh, useful for your child learning English. 
Uh, I can say, of course, from the BBC, CBeebies is a wonderful app, but it is geofenced, which means that uh, if you're not on the UK App Store, I think it's very difficult uh, to get hold of that. Uh, I think Sesame Street have some interesting things uh, for the American English, and if I can do a little bit of shameless promotion, our app should be coming very, very soon. Uh, of course, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as it's ready, I will jump on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube tell you all about it, so uh, it's coming soon. Uh, thanks for that question, I hope that helps. If you know of a good app uh, for children learning English, please uh, pop it in the comment section below so that we can share all of our uh, discoveries on the App Store, on Google Play Store, and uh, across the whole of the internet. So. A short one there. Thank you very much for watching uh, this episode of Tea for Teachers. If you have a question, uh, just pop it in the comments section below. We'll look for it, we'll find it, and I hope to answer your questions soon. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and see you next time. Bye.